Remember when then State Rep Tom Nelson slept at his desk in the State Assembly cham Chambers in protest over the state budget impasse? In tonight's Inside Look, we've got another state representative staging a protest over stalled legislation. Milwaukee Democrat Jonathan Brostoff is here to describe what he's doing and why. Representative Brostoff, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So we can see the difference. We had a before shot and, and, and now you here today. But why don't you tell us what you're doing in protest? Sure. Well, I wouldn't actually classify it as a protest per se. Uh, I think it's more so just a commitment I've made to a member, uh, a number of the member of deaf community leaders who have been working with uh, across the state on passing their legislation. And basically, especially for the deaf community, it's a visual indicator saying I'm with you and we're not going to stop until we get this done. Um, so it's more so it's kind of like a working arrangement between me and them and just letting them know I'm with them and their ally and every time they see me they're going to know I'm, I'm going to continue my work on it um, but it kind of got covered by a local media source and kind of blew up like that but it's more so it's just a kind of personal commitment between me and some of the stakeholders who I've been working with. So tell me what your commitment is what are you seeking to do? Sure. So we've been working for years now on a bill for the deaf community, um, basically updating the sign language interpreting laws in Wisconsin. And it's a fairly technical bill, but in essence, it would create more access for the deaf community, more accountability for the deaf community, and it would get a lot more sign language interpreters back to work in Wisconsin, which would help with the scarcity issue uh, we currently have. So, so uh, the legislation would create a new licensing board for sign language I interpreters. Um, what is the holdup on this? Well, uh, we enjoyed broad bipartisan support in the assembly. In fact, uh, we had uh, basically unanimous support in the assembly, so all 99 members, and it went through committee, no problem. It passed the executive session in committee uh, unanimously, and when it got to the Senate, it stalled last time around, which isn't terribly uncommon, but it was a big blow to the deaf community because of how important this legislation is. And folks are really uh, torn up, understandably so, afterwards. So I basically said, you know, this is going to be my number one priority and we're, we're not going to stop until we get it done. And I've been thankful to have colleagues like Representative Skaronsky, uh, Representative, or oh, former Representative Kleefish, and uh, Senator Teston and other uh, Republicans and Democrats who are willing to continue the work on this and, and who also understand how imperative it is that we advance deaf rights in Wisconsin and get this bill passed. Describe for me um, what this uh, legislation would do again. I know it creates a licensing board, but then it sets up kind of tiers of, of different uh, experience and education that these uh, interpreter, interpreters would need to have. Uh, describe that. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, in a nutshell, it's matching interpreters at the education and skill level they're at with the jobs that are appropriate for them. And this is especially relevant for situ situations such as medical, mental health, and legal, where the nature of uh, the work is a little more technical and it's also um, a little more high stakes uh, given uh, w what folks are working on. So uh, this would more clearly define the scope of practice as well. So you would have to have an advanced level interpreter to do things uh, like uh, medical kinds of signing or, or, or legal or perhaps if, if a hearing impaired person is having an interaction with law enforcement, for example. A and why is that important? Sure. Well, I, I can actually explain it by, by a quick example of a young Wisconsin woman who came to testify at one of the first deaf legislative days, uh, Teresa. She uh, was seeking medical attention in a, in a rural Wisconsin hospital, and although uh, she, before she got there, um, she, she informed them that she needed a live interpreter uh, who was up to par. Uh, she was not provided that. And uh, long story short, she basically ended up getting the wrong surgery performed mm -hmm. on her. This was very critical to her health, and so um, she's kind of made this her life's work now, and I think she's going to end up being a civil rights lawyer so she can protect others in this situation. But we want to make sure that in sensitive situations like that, people are getting the exact appropriate care, and when 
you're relying on someone to um, communicate that information properly, you need to make sure that the skill level and an appropriate uh, amount of, of information is being transmitted in a critical time. So you want to have that scope of practice well defined, as our bill does. Now, a licensing board would also be able to investigate uh, violations and, and make findings. Uh, why is that important? Correct. So one of the issues we heard, and I toured all over the state, and I met with folks from rural areas and from urban areas and from uh, different scopes of life, and, and among the deaf community that I, I met with and from all the people I heard, one thing was very consistent, which was they wanted a mechanism for accountability in the bill that doesn't currently exist. So right now there's no real effective way to go after someone who's practicing illegally, and that's something that a lot of people were very concerned with. And although it's not a necessarily a widespread issue and we don't have tons of illegal interpreters you know trying to harm people uh, for the people whose lives it affect it was something that they uh, made sure to let me know was a priority and so we had to include that uh, absolutely in the bill so it offers that level of accountability that doesn't currently exist all right well representative brostov thanks very much for joining us and uh, describing uh, what you're doing thank you and thanks for your work